Is that what you have? Read, let me hear again. The king's house is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. No. I'm looking for where the Bible says a borrower is a slave of the lender. Proverbs 21 verse 1. Who knows where it is? To do the seven, the rich rule it over the poor. Huh? The rich rule it over the poor. The and rich man that lends to the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. No, finish this, that first line. Here. The rich rule it over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Is what? Servant to the lender. Is servant to who? The lender. The Bible says, as a believer, you're not allowed to borrow money. Why? By borrowing money, you're telling God, count me out of your covenant blessings. Because every child of God is a child of covenant. And God has promised to provide your needs. Let's see the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 12. What does this say? No, let's, let's first take chapter 15 verse 6 of the book of Deuteronomy. For the Lord thy God blesseth thee as he promised thee. And thou as shalt, he promised. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. Hold the line. As a child of God your covenant with God your blood covenant with God positions you where you will lend to others and not borrow from anybody read on but thou shalt not borrow can you raise up find somebody and say to him or her thou shalt not borrow read on thou shalt not borrow go on He ran to me. With his wife. And I asked him, are you ready to pay back that money? He said, I I've already paid it back. You're a dangerous man. Well, I don't know about being dangerous. And I said to him, I'm not prefer you go back to that mission, the village? No. Go back to your place. Beginning today, you sleep like a pregnant night moth for six days. On the seventh day, your strength will return. To my surprise, he and his wife ran to my wife. And my wife was angry with me that I didn't pray for the man. She said, darling, just pray and tell him you'll be healed in seven days. Madam, you're not my boss. My boss lives up there. The man left. No, the man said, now I know God wants me to die. I have paid back that money. If God honored that my short sentence, it was because God hates borrowing. I was amused two weeks after he returned, wearing a starched guinea brocade and brand new pair of shoes. He asked me, do you remember me? I said, I remember you, Boroboro man. I remember you. <laughs> he said he slept for a good six days, like a pregnant night moth. On the seventh day, his strength returned, and he went to see his doctor. They could find no cancerous cell in his body. <laughs> Borrowing is a habit. But it is an evidence that the demon of greed lives in you. 
But I'm looking for honest men here tonight who will say to God, Father, I have developed the habit of borrowing. You know, some people borrow shoes. Some people borrow cars. When I was going to marry her, I told her, Madam, I don't have a car, so I will not borrow a car from anybody. I will, I will go to, you two of us go to church with a taxi cab. Her, friend, her friends protested, but did I care? Hey, Madam, take five kubo. I will take five. Do ten to kubo. Five for you, five for your chief breastmaid. I will take ten kubo. Five for myself, five for my best man. The beautiful thing about life, if you drive into the church premises and walk into the church, nobody will know what car brought you. Will they know? <laughs> when you start the habit of borrowing at the kickoff of your marriage, you are going to live a life of tension, a life of unhappiness, a life of depression. A lot of worry. And worry is you in a dark room developing negatives. As a believer, we will run out of money. Set a day aside and fast. And say to God, bless me with money. No. Father, grant me supernatural supplies. Unfortunately, believers don't know how to use their prayer. Unfortunately, many people don't know. A man who knows how to pray knows nothing that is impossible. If you read the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 7, the Bible says, ask. And the reply has a touch of finality and a hint of conclusion. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Full stop. If you know that to your heart. As a girl, when you borrow money from a man, borrow your boy. The man will go beyond asking to refund that money. Will begin to show interest in your body. Only God will help you from what a man can do to you. Do I have anybody this night who will say to God, Father, I don't want to live a life of borrowing. Help me. Can I have you raise up here? No. I'm looking for those who are already borrowing. You have borrowed and you don't like that habit of borrowing. Can you raise up your hand? Stand up. And say to God, Father, I'm sorry for borrowing. Take this habit away from me. Teach me how to move the hands of heaven to supply my financial needs. Father, I kneel at your feet that you may teach me how to live without borrowing. Take away this habit from me and reposition me and re and re anoint me and inform me, dear Lord, to live a life that is free from borrowing. Father, everyone who is standing before you is standing because you ask him or her to stand up. And therefore let the miracle of fresh anointing come upon them. And grant them revelational knowledge. Grant them insightful knowledge, prophetic knowledge on how to live without borrowing. I declare beginning today they will borrow no more. And they shall all no more. Father, honor my prayer for them for I ask in Jesus' name. And brethren, we serve an awesome God that answers prayers. You remember, we are building a school in Abia, and I asked you not to give one cobra toward the school building. I said, Allow me to move God to supply that money without supplying it through you. If you look at the gates we are beautifying out there. I never asked you to give money towards that, that work. We are putting millions of naira. I never asked you to give money towards that fence um, reinforcement.
You don't need men to help you have money. God can directly supply. Well, if you have a seed, you can sow into your finances. Or a seed that you can plant or sow that will lead to a new beginning, that will lead to great financial increase. Can we see the book of, of Mark chapter 5? Let's say 25. I'm going to ask you to examine that land very well. I'll have a question for you. Go on, sir. And a certain woman, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12, 12 years, years and has suffered many, and suffered things, many things in the hands of and has spent all that she had and was nothing bettered. Nothing bettered. But better. rather grew worse. When she had heard, of, she had Jesus, heard of Jesus, came, came in, in the place behind and touched his garment. I touched his garment. For she said, For she said If I may if touch I may his, blood, touch his garment, I shall be whole. Stop. Who can show me what was the seed God gave this woman that brought her to a new place in her life? That brought her to a fresh health. That brought her to a place of sound health. What were the seeds she used here? Anybody? Yes, sir. Huh? No, faith. no, not faith. Yes, sir. Huh? What? Determination. Determination. No, sir. Well, yes and no, but that's not what I'm looking for. Huh? She had what? Oh, no, you were in the morning session. That's where you picked it. Hey, stop. That was not Boro Boro. The woman had tenacity. And everyone here, God can give you tenacity. When people are saying all is over in your life, tell them this is just the beginning. A friend of mine, 1972, was sacked by the University of Ibado for witnessing excessively in the university. They sacked him. And he went to the VC and said to the VC, thank you for opening six doors for God to bless me with. He have sacked me as I go. This God that preached shall open doors for me. Ability to recognize God's ability and availability is a seed in your hand. My friend, on his way to Lorraine, through local jar, saw a beautiful portion of land and God asked him to buy the land. He bought, he, he's the geologist. He bought the land and found large deposit of marbles. And he began marble quarry in local jar. He was paid 2,750 naira a month in 1972. But he began to generate 5,000 naira a day with that quarry. Ability to see God's preparedness to open doors when the enemy has shut doors against you is a seed in your hand. While people are pitying, you should be laughing and be celebrating, knowing that this God will not leave you stranded. He will not abandon you. returned to Lorraine his home and God showed him a portion of land to buy. He bought the land and he found gold and silver. For many years I would go to Lorraine and this man would give me cartons of money. <laughs> One day God asked me, man, do you frequent a bad door meaning Lorraine because of this money or because of evangelistic programs? And I said to God, thou knowest. If you go to Lorraine, you'll find a big forest. He fails. He lives there alone with his family, with soldiers guarding him. Hold somebody's hand and say to him, That God is my God. <laughs> let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 5. And let's take verse 4. 
What was the seed in the hands of Peter that gave him such bountiful harvests? Yes, sir. Now, when he had left speaking, when had left speaking he said unto Simon, said unto Simon Lord, 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 verse 3, and he entered into one of the ships, he entered into one of which the was Simon's, it was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. A little, and yes. he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Yes. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep, yes. and let down your nets for a drought. Yes. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, have toiled all night and have all taken night, nothing. And we have cut nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let's go back. What was the seed in the hands of Peter that gave him this great harvest? Anybody? Yes, sir. Huh? Raise your voice. Obedience. Was that the seed or the boat? Everyone here has something God has planted in your hand as a tool and a seed that can give you a new beginning and give you multiplied blessings. To Peter, it was a boat and also a willingness to give up the boat. Let's watch to 1 Kings chapter 17. We take verse 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm asking you, what is that seed God has put in your hands that can multiply you and give you a new beginning and, great, and give you a great tomorrow? What is it? Every one of us has something that you can use to receive 1,000 blessings. Yes, sir. Arise, get thee to Zeripat, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow. I have commanded a widow, widow woman there to sustain thee. To sustain so thee. he arose and went to Zeripat. He arose and went to Zeripat. When he came to the gate of the city, yes. behold, the woman, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. Yes. And he called to her and he said, to her, Fetch me, I pray thee, me, I pray a little water, a little water in, a vessel, in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, yes. he called to her and said, her again. Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Yes. And she said, and she As the Lord thy God liveth, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake. I don't have any food. But a handful of meat but in a, a barrel. Food of food. And a and little a oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my sons, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. And for thus I, I hope you are following the scenario. God has spoken to this woman to take care of Elijah. Elijah showed up, and the woman was not willing to take care of Elijah, which sounds very natural she was a widow a man whose a woman whose husband had died she had a child to care for and the food she had on her was very little and she was ready to eat and die because that food held no promise Why was she arguing with Eli e Elijah? Can somebody tell me why was she arguing with Elijah? Anybody who knows? Yes, sir. Is it poverty? Poverty. Who else? Why was she arguing with Elijah? Yes, sir. Because she failed to recognize the presence. Because she did not. Were you in the morning session? No wonder. Hey, sit down. <laughs> She did not recognize Elijah as a man of God. There are many people who cannot recognize a man of God, who don't have the ability, the grace, to recognize a man of God. In the presence of a man of God, your feelings will be affected, your thoughts will be affected, 
you receive a revolutionary knowledge of what God is about to do around you. The presence of a man of God brings an anointing upon you, a towering anointing. But not everybody is able to recognize a man of God when they see a man of God. Unfortunately and surprisingly, if not amazingly, only mad people can recognize men of God quickly. Recognizing the man of God, what does that mean? She did not know that that man was a man of God. What does that mean? A man of God holds promise. Carries promise. If you take care of him, that if you know him and take care of him as a man of God. Can we now rush to 2 Kings chapter 4? Let's take this 8. This is another scenario. Anybody? And it fell on a day that the Elisha passed to Shunem. Yes. And there was a great woman. That was a and she constrained woman. him to eat bread. She and forced so, this man of God to eat bread. And so it was as he passed as by. As he passed by. in Tita to eat bread. The woman welcomed her to her home. And she said unto her husband. She said to her husband. Behold. No. Now, this man. The seed. This man. Is. A man of God. Now, what is the seed here? The ability to recognize a man of God as a man of God. Madam, in this place, if you sleep, we we'll ask you to stand up. I was shocked. While we're going to, to go through Bene, time and again, Every time we got to the, the boundary, a particular woman would walk up to me and take my particulars and process the particulars. She would say to me, I had the voice that asked me to take care of you. When she asked me, who are you? That voice I hear, is it from where? Madam, I don't know. I'm sure heaven must have been speaking to you. Not everybody has that grace to recognize men of God. When you can recognize a man of God, it becomes a seed in your hand. But the thought of helping him is another ball game altogether. Can we see the book of the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 44? Okay, let's start from verse 40. What does it say? He that receiveth you receiveth me. Where? Well, stop. It's a powerful lie. The Bible said if you receive a man of God, you have received God. Isn't that awesome? Just by receiving a man of God, the Bible says you have received God. When you receive God, can you imagine the blessings that will follow you? Read on, sir. And he that received me received him that sent me. Jesus said, If you receive me, you have received my father who sent me. He that received a prophet in the name of a prophet. He shall that receive receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Shall receive a prophet's reward. He that received What is a prophet reward? A prophet reward is that that which is missing in your life, in your family, shall be supplied through that prophet. And in this meeting tonight, we are here. That whatever is missing in your family, in your life, be supplied by God. As a child of God, you are a candidate of 1,000 blessings. Raise your hand and say, I am a candidate of 1,000 blessings. I know that some people will receive that only in one year. Some in 10 years. Some in 100 years. But only you will decide. Read them. We are back to Second King chapter four. Right where you are, by receiving this man of God, this woman was ready to receive a prophet's reward. And what was that prophet's reward? Go back. Let, go on. Let us make a little chamber. I pray thee. 
on the wall. So build a house for him. And let us set for him there a bed yeah. and a table and, and a stool and a candlestick. Yeah. And it shall be when he cometh to us when that he shall up. turn in thither. Yes. Go on. And it fell on a day that he came thither and yes. he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is it to be done for thee? Hold the line. That question we run into from time to time. Everyone listening to me tonight, there is an open check on your laps. Yeah. Now let's rush down to chapter 10 of the book of Mark and take verse 51. Elisha said to this woman, what can we do for you? And as a child of God and a woman of God and a man of God, the same question follows you everywhere you go. God says, what can I do for you? We have to have the ability to recognize the peculiar concentrated presence of this God. We must ask God to open our ears that we may hear him. And be able to respond to him. 1051. What does he say, sir? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? That is, what do you want me? I, I don't know if you know that that question is a difficult question. Not easy to answer. Many years ago, God asked me, well, How much do you want me to pay you? A month. <laughs> my question was father if I ask for one million a month you will call me a greedy man if I ask for one naira a month you will call me an unbeliever father only thou knowest right where you are this night as we speak if you can receive a man of God if I will not receive the man of God you have received this awesome God that created the whole world and he will give you a prophet's reward Amen. what was the blind man's answer the blind man said unto him Lord that the I blind may said unto him, Lord, receive my sight that I may receive do I have anybody this night who has a need and a pressing need and you believe that this need if i pray over that need the heaven shall open for you to receive that need anybody here are you sure <laughs> i didn't say tomorrow i mean those who are expecting a miracle this night you are the mighty god the great i am Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your seat. We have not come to that point of praise and worship. Can we run to the book of Zechariah? Chapter 8, let's take verse 12. I want you to take note, come. Those of you who are going up and down, can you sit down? In the presence of the Lord, we must know how to acknowledge him and respect him and reverence him and respect and celebrate and honor his presence. It's not the time to go up and down. Going up and down is an act of disrespect to the presence of You can't even do it to a governor. Let alone the president. Yes, sir. For the seed shall be prosperous. Okay? Say it again. For the seed shall be prosperous. For the seed you sow shall be prosperous. The seed you sow in the life of anybody who needs encouragement. Men and brethren, time is seed. Money is seed. Kindness is seed. Love is seed. Whatever you can do that will encourage people shall be considered by God as a seed. But you must do it on purpose for a purpose. 
That's what I've been preaching. Give your offering an assignment. Tell your offering as I give this offering, let there be peace in my family. Let heaven honor me. As I give this offering, Father, increase my creativity and my imagination. As I give this offering, bless me with hunger. I don't know whether you know that hunger is the greatest gift God can give to any one of us. Hunger to do well. Hunger to please God. Hunger to obey God. Hunger to serve God. Because anybody who can obey and serve God and honor Him and believe Him will become too dangerous for any enemy to handle. You don't worry about your enemies anymore. <laughs> Something happened. I was in my compound where I was born. They asked me to repair the hall. To not repair but rebuild the hall. And I said to them, after I spent so much money building a big hall where you can relax, all I heard was people were planning to poison me. Like in one voice, all of them said, all those who poison tried to poison you, not only have they died, those that work with them also have died. <laughs> the way they put it, I was, I was amused. They say, when you love this God and serve this God, now you serve God by serving His people. You love God by loving His people. But it's the way you serve God and obey God and honor Him that you become too dangerous for any enemy to handle. You plant tomato seed. What do you receive? Tomato. The farmer knows if when you plant yam, what will you harvest? Yeah. Uh, a brother from Cameroon came here and gave me many bunches of plantain and said, Father, uh, I said, Daddy, ask God to make me a millionaire. And I said, Sure, why not? Kneel down. He knelt down. Father, Give him one million uh, pla uh, plantain bunches in the name of Jesus. He said, no, 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 no I don't want plantain. <laughs> huh? That's money. But not, that's not the same thing as one million naira. If you sow kindness, you receive kindness. Yes, sir. That is where life is made. There are girls who are just rude by nature. When a girl is conscious of her beauty and her intelligence, she becomes too dangerous for anybody to deal with. When you are a pretty girl and you have no character, you have no use. Talk to me, sir. I hear you, sir. Right where you are, life is an echo. What you put in is what you bring out. If you want God to multiply you, you must sow in the lives of the people of God as God has recommended. Read and the Bible says, and the seed shall be prosperous. Yes, sir. The vine shall give her fruit. The vine shall give her fruit. The ground shall give her increase. The ground shall give, that is everything around you obeys this law. Of increase. When, when it seems as though your husband no longer loves you, plant a secret offering to his life. Write him a love letter. Find the shoes he wear the next day. Put the letter after the socks. Just say to him, darling, of, I, I know we'll quarrel and we'll disagree, but you are my first love and my last love. Nobody has ever loved me like you. If this state has a governor, you are my governor. If Nigeria has a president, you are my president. I celebrate with my heart every day. And I am appointed by God to stand by you. Say to him, many women can run after you, but none has the commission from God to stand by you like me. Girl, 
Jesus can trust you, but nobody has appointment from God to work as your partner through life. I'll be the mother to your children. I'll be your first aid doctor. I'll be your advisor. I will be your cook. I'll make sure you eat healthy food that you may live long for me. Is there any man who would like to receive your letter here? Let me see where let's go. Let's go where let me see. Sisters, have you seen the hands up? Put it after the socks. When he pulls out the socks, the law of curiosity will command him to read that letter. Now, if you are around, you likely as who wrote this nonsense? It's a lie. It's not nonsense. He wrote it three times in his in his toilet. You know, one good thing about toilet is a republic. Once you're inside, the nobody will chase you out. <laughs> when my uncle bowed me from praying in his house, I go to the toilet and say my prayer. He would knock. And I said, Uncle, just give me time. I will soon come out. <laughs> he read in his toilet. He read again in his car while the driver will be driving. In his office alone, he will shut the doors and read that letter again for the third time. And if that means on his way back, he will buy you a gift. You know, one of us did it here. The husband chased her out of the house and went after uh, uh, another woman. And she came crying and I said, my friend, relax, it's not a big problem. Just write the man a letter. Tell him you love him with all your heart. Shake her, wake her up. And you are praying, my lad. You are sleeping. <laughs> she wrote what I asked her to write. The man was shocked that she could obey the law of extra mind. The law of extra mind is the ability to do more than a husband can do, a wife can do. To save better than a husband can save. When you can care for your wife and her relations, you are obeying the law of extra mind. And the promotion will be 1,000 blessings. Hallelujah! The man took her and bought a gene for her. The only problem we have is the later the man sat down and asked her, where do you learn all these things? She let the cat out of the bag. She said, Reverend taught me all those things. <laughs> hey, when you go home tonight, don't quote me when you talk to your husband about this teaching. Sir, it says the, the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. The vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. The Bible is saying the same thing that any type of seed you plant shall bring forth great harvest. Amen. Read on. And the heavens shall give their, their due. Even the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these things. Wait. Stand up and say to first four persons, whatever unbelievers look for, you will possess all of them. medical doctor work in our hospital. A little bad girl. Every time she came to see me, she would be on her knees. Huh? Madam, in this part of the world, nobody kneels down for another man. Stand up. And she will smile physically like a Cheshire cat. And will say to me, I am used to kneeling down doesn't hurt me 
it's my way of showing respect and reverence for you. There is a way you conduct yourself and you command blessings. As children of God, let none of us argue with his father or mother. Don't argue with them. No matter what they will say, don't argue. Can we see the book of Proverbs 20 verse 20? What does it say? Whoso curses his father, so father, curses his father or, his mother, or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in his, his life shall be put off. What does that mean? Every one of us, the, the spirit of the Lord is the candle of your life. He gives you direction and instruction. And amazingly, God prospers by instruction. Don't you ever argue with your mother or your father. I have a good mother, good in the sense that if you argue with her, she will start crying. And her tears will stop you from arguing with her. She asked me to buy her two jeans. Man, a no woman. What are you doing? What do you do with two jeans? She blinked her eyes and tears began to rush down her cheeks. She asked me, when did old age become a sin? <laughs> and I said, stop crying. <laughs> the jeep will come next week. But I'll give it to your son who will take care of you. Don't you ever argue with your parents. Can I also add, don't argue with your husband. And to the wife and the husband, don't insist on winning arguments. When an argument comes up, what well, if you should shut up his or her mouth? Because the more you argue, the more you increase the tension of the house. I was shocked that my wife, for 30 years, I would talk to her, get angry, rage, and she would just keep quiet and look at me and say nothing. Her silence was louder than voice. Her silence was a message that said, you are the preacher, be the man of God. <laughs> Her father said to me, Uma, two of you are stubborn. You cannot survive in any marriage for more than one week. This marriage has no future, no hope. And I said to the old man, uh, Oga, God who brought me here will help us. The man had dashed me six plus six acres of land. He said, give me back my land. I don't want to lose the land and lose, and lose you when two of you will fight and quarrel. When I told my senior brother I was going to marry her, he said, now I know God wants to punish you for all the problems you created for our father. My brother said, this is going to be a violent marriage. I hope you will not kill one another. Because I, 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 had, I was born with good news and value. I could create problems for my father. If he flogged me, which he did with casual ease, I will find good frog, put it in his cup of water, lose a cup of water. And when he opens the cup of water, the frog will tell him, don't flog with my again. <laughs> I'll tell him it is punishment for that, for, for flogging me. My brother said, this is your marriage. is God's way of punishing you for all the problems you created for our father. You're a wicked boy. Thank God he has found a girl who will teach you good lessons. But everybody was wrong. Only my mother liked her. My mother said, you need a stubborn girl 
as a wife. A girl not to ask you for account. A girl when you say stand up would ask you why must we stand up? <laughs> My mother loved her so much that on our traditional wedding day, the father wanted snaps and I had only Coke and Fanta for him. My mother got up and said to her father, Don't don't worry about this stupid religious boy. I came with a carton of schnapps. Ma, if you give this your carton of schnapps, who will marry her? She said, you. Me? You must be joking. I'm gone. This marriage is over. On my way out of the house, the man called me back and said, bring me water plus sugar plus coke plus all the things you stupid AC people drink. Bring. Nobody gave us hope. Nobody. Nobody. One of my uncles said, I will not accompany you to the traditional wedding because the marriage has no hope. Two of you are rebellious. This peaceful girl sitting down here, when she was our treasurer in our students' union, that was the day she did not attend the ESCO committee. I am a German, the former federal minister. So hard, I'm asked her, why didn't you attend our, our S committee? You are a treasurer. Without offering a word, she opened her handbag, brought out our money, and threw it at us. She said, this is your three months. It's more than what my father gives me as allowance in a day. Ojo asked me, who will marry her? And I said she has to go back to Bia Yoruba and to find a husband. That's where she was born. Do you know, eight years into our marriage, the father called me and said, Oh man, I took six acres of land from you because I did not believe in this marriage. But I have found the love between two of you. Your respect for one another. Your care for one another. Therefore, I'm going to give you 24 acres of land. <laughs> if you're married to a violent man, you don't have to say anything when he's angry. Just shut your mouth. And your silence will become a powerful preacher from heaven. No man can slap a quiet wife. Unless the man is mental. Trouble will start when the man says you are an idiot and you reply and say your mother is an idiot, your sisters are all idiots, everyone from your village is an idiot and a witness. That's when the man will stand up and show you his strength. That's what you call mutual aggressiveness. Are you still here? Yes, sir. As a woman of God, you don't show your holiness by fighting your husband. Let none of you insist on winning argument. Husband, if your wife likes argument, when she's arguing, just shut up your mouth and look at her and laugh. Allow her to win that day. If I make you sleep very well, she'll be so happy that she defeated you. Are you still here? Raise your hand and shout hallelujah. Send the book. Can we run to chapter 6 of the book of Galatia? We take verse 7, we take verse 10. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not more. God is not more. For whatsoever a man sows, so that shall he also that shall he also reap. The Bible says life is built on this great principle. Can you please begin to the practice how to greet people with a smile rippling through your lips. Even if you're tired, excitement drives away fatigue. Holy Spirit, be my God. Can you look up and look at me? I know you're praying. I am a beneficiary multiplied seeds 
soon at various junctions of my life. I don't know that many of you may not know that at the PFN level, I give offering on behalf of every one of you. I have never asked this fellowship to pay the assessment they give to us that runs into millions of naira. When I give that money, I give it on behalf of this fellowship. Sometimes I give 10 million, 15 million, 1 million. I also give on behalf of my family. I give on behalf of my children. I give on behalf of those that serve me at various levels of responsibility. As a result of that, I now look at myself as a beneficiary of these multiplied seeds sown at different junctions of my life. Job said, I give to one, I give to two, I give to three, I give to four, I give to five, I give to six, I give to seven. And he became the richest man in the entire region. By sowing seeds, a seed, I said, a seed is the money you give, all the offering you give, all the kindness you show, because of the future you want God to create for you. There was a time I gave out nine jeeps in one week. Because I wanted God to bless me with jeeps, with vehicles, with mobility. I've always loved mobility. <laughs> I told you, two weeks ago we went to a church here in New York to preach. And the, the bishop of the church got up and said to the church, This man has the gift of giving millions of naira to churches. Now that he's in our church, I'm sure he'll give me more than two million naira. What? Is that what they do to other preachers? And I said, brother, sorry. I give when God prompts me to give. I don't give when men ask me to give. As of this hour in your church, God asked me to give you 50,000 naira, not one million. There's an offering. There's also a seed. A seed creates the future you want to have. And so tonight, I'm going to call for those who can. How many of you here, if you were owing, let me have my pouch. How many of you, if you were owing 50,000 naira, would not borrow to pay that money? Anybody here? If you were owing, if you bought something worth 50,000, you will not borrow to pay. Anybody here? Let me see your hand raised up. God has blessed you to a place where if you are owing 50,000 naira, you will not borrow to pay. Can I have you raise up your hand? Raise it away. Don't be afraid. I won't kill you. Raise your hand. Short persons, can you come out and pledge 50,000 naira? Say to God, I'll give you 50,000 naira between now and in one month. This is our house. We promise our children must be completed. Come out quickly. Okay, count my own. This thing looks small. Are you sure it is 50? Is that all we have in this hall? All those who can pay a bill of 50,000 dollars without borrowing, come out and give to God a secret offering of 50,000 naira. And I'm giving you one month to redeem it. Yes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. Elder, are you in town? You're welcome. This is a man that saved us in a miraculous way that gave birth to the crowd will now see 
Give him a good clap up from somebody. And God rewarded him by making his wife a, 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 a federal minister of the Federal Republic of Good Nigeria. Give, give, give him one more clap up from somebody. Don't walk like an arm robber is following after you. Walk like you are happy to be a seed unto God. Those who can, who, those who can pay a bill of 20,000, 10,000, 5,000, 1,000 without borrowing, can you come out and stand behind them? I'm about to pray for you. You can pick, you can pay a bill of 1,000, 5,000, 20,000 without borrowing money. Can you raise up the hand you use in doing your business? Father, I demand that every hand raised up be blessed with Holy Ghost Pentecostal anointing oil. Amen. Whatever they shall lay these hands to do shall attract blessings. Amen. Shall command blessings. Amen. Shall produce blessings. Amen. Shall produce 1,000 blessings. Amen. Everyone who has raised up his or her hand shall no longer be an ordinary person. Amen. Let each one become a beneficiary of multiple seeds sown on the paths and at the various junctions of life. Those that have helped in hidden places, those that have, have helped alone, those that have helped publicly, of all those that have helped their Lord and bring the reward and the harvest to them. You said we shall sow and we shall become reapers. Father, I demand they shall become reapers. Every voice that speaks against them shall speak no more. 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 Father, the lessons you have taught us tonight, do not allow them to forget those lessons. Amen. Particularly in their homes, let no one insist on winning arguments. Amen. May we sow the seed of kindness, the seed of love. Amen. Amazingly, on the cross of Calvary, after the master was nailed on the cross, Father, he has surprised us when he said, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh -uh. They were, those people were not children, they were adults. But the master was teaching us how to forgive those who have wronged us. And that for anyone here who has not forgiven anybody who has wronged him, give him or her the grace to forgive. I declare that this night shall be our night of new beginning. Our night of new beginning. Our night of the beginning of our endless laughter. We shall stand out of the crowd as men favored by you. Awesome God, thank you. You have asked me to announce that each one here shall be blessed. Amen. And they shall be blessed beyond measure. Amen. There are enemies who look down on them and talk down on them shall now see them and ask them for help. Amen. Anyhow they shall step into that house will, that house will receive peace. Amen. Anybody will shake his or her hand. 
that person shall prosper. Yeah. For everybody that will help in this life shall prosper. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. And what unbelievers are looking for shall not come looking for them. It shall be so. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I'd like you to go back to your seed, pick an offering. Uh, no seed can germinate if it is not planted. Find part of it, part of your pledge, all of your pledge, and then you dance out with your offering. This is a night we have promised God we shall worship Him and dance for Him. The dancing time has come. Can you walk back faster? Faster, we don't have time. Quickly look for the offering, which will be part. No, wait, don't worry, you dance out. Don't give it now. Hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. You dance out with the offering. Don't just drop it. It's not an ordinary offering. We're attacking God for the safety he gave us. For the peace he gave us. Now this election could end without anybody slaughtering we from the east. It made me cry. Are you ready? Can we stand up? Let's say to God,
If you come from a family where nobody has ever prospered, place your hand upon your head. If you are sick, lay your hand wherever the sickness is. If you're asking God for the fruit of the womb, lay your hand there. Please, before we begin our prayer, 
listen to me tomorrow we want all the zones to send four persons each to our training program we are going to teach these people how to win souls and disciples and disciple newcomers we are expecting our zones to reach a good target of 100 people per zone between now and Christmas it shall run for <laughs> ability to witness is a seed in your hand Ability to disciple others, another great seed. You can use it to bless the kingdom of God and expand the kingdom of God. We are here to worship the Lord and to enjoy his word. And then go out and win souls for Christ and disciple them. So it will run for four weeks. We want to see every zone ably represented. Please, on the dot of 5 p.m., it shall last for five minutes. If you come late, I'll make you to stand. It will last for 45 minutes. We can increase the attendance here, the numerical strength of our fellowship. We can, we can learn. Pastors even can send their members to learn tomorrow how to win souls and how to disciple new converts. Only what you have done for Jesus will speak for you when time shall time no more for you. Assuming you were to end your life here on earth, only the souls who have won for Christ will speak for you. Every one of us must be a soul winner. Every one of us must show love and recompense God for his love for us. Okay. Can we now pray? Madam, stand up. I don't like when I say stand up. So people are too big to stand up. Can you now lay your hand? Take five minutes. Tell God what you want God to do for you. Five minutes. Open your mouth. Talk to him. Focus your attention on his presence. Focus on the omnipotence of God. Shall we pray? Five minutes, everybody.
of your heart to recognize the presence of God the peculiar concentrated presence of God that presence of God upon you already shall not mock everything that mocks you Father on my right hand side and my left hand side and in front of me and in the gallery there are people who are crying in their hearts saying God don't pass us by and for that there are seven people here who have been grumbling, complaining, saying they have never fallen under the anointing and others fall every Wednesday and the cry says don't pass us by those seven people, whatever they are, let your angels stand by them. Amen. Father, there are many people who by borrowing have made themselves slaves and have stepped into the status of servanthood. For when a king loses direction, he will become a slave. Whatever they are tonight, let the chain of slavery around them be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. It's a sad thing when a king is functioning like a slave. This night, that status shall not be cancelled. Yeah. Father, let now your angels be released to move from person to person, from family to family. All those who are asking for your touch of healing and deliverance and promotion and lifting, may they receive each a miracle now. Yeah. Father, you have spoken to many and ask them what they would like you to do for them. All those who have stated what they want, all those who are expecting you to honor their faith, wherever they are, let your angels be released to stand beside them. And let the yoke be broken. Father, they are 14 in number particularly who must not go back as they came who need an extraordinary demonstration and manifestation of your power father the enemies are asking them who is your God now demonstrate your power on their behalf on my right hand side on my left hand side and in front of me and in the gallery by the power of God in the name of Jesus Somebody help, somebody help, somebody help, somebody help, somebody help. <sighs> Father, everyone who is crying his or her heart, saying, God, don't pass me by. Let your power arise. And let the enemies be scattered, 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 be scattered. By the power of God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
There are two more. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Father, you have just shown me somebody help. You have just shown me sister while we are celebrating the Many people who got pregnant, you have shown me two persons who lost their pregnancies, and now I demand that you will visit them this night. And that which the enemy had taken from them shall now be returned in a multiplied form. That these two sisters each shall have twins. Yeah. Ask him to wait and relax. Don't be in a hurry. Now the power will flow. Madam, what are you looking for? Close your eyes. You're busy looking at me. Am I a football player? Father, there are two persons here who are crying on account of their desire their prayer for a child. You have visited 19 persons, but these two must not go back the same. Let this night be the night of divine visitation. There are two in number. Somebody help. Somebody help. Somebody help. Somebody help. Awesome God. Can we give a good clap of from unto God, everybody? <laughs> Next week, I'll be presenting the third key that unlocks the possibility, the blessings of 1,000 blessings. Uh, but we shall combine it with a short miracle prayer for all those who have prayers that have not been answered by God. Next Wednesday shall be your Wednesday of divine visitation. Remember all the zones. We are going to call. There will be a roll call tomorrow. And any zone that is not represented. Shall pay a fine. A fine of 1,000 naira. I have never heard that before in the church. You are hearing it now. A fine of 1,000 naira. I have a key in my hand, the key to a house. Raise up your hand, everybody, and repeat after me and say, Father, make me a willing sower of seeds. Father, I rededicate my life to become a sower of blessings to others. Help me to give my best to God. Whenever I have an opportunity to do so. Father, you have promised me 1,000 blessings. My heart has believed it. And I declare it shall be so unto me. Beginning tonight. 
I am a candidate of 1,000 blessings. Father, prepare me and position me and educate me and anoint me to receive these 1,000 blessings. Hear me, O oh God, for I ask in Jesus' name. Father, this key in my hand represents everyone who is asking for an accommodation of his own, a house of his own. I don't know how many there are, but you know them. Let the miracle of provision start now. Let no member of this family age without a house of his or her own. Father, where there is a sin, forgive. Where there is a mistake, forgive. You have promised and you have begun to honor your promise. Extend it to everyone here. We leave this hall knowing that we are candidates of 1,000 blessings. Therefore, bless us with expectant faith. Bless us with expectant faith. May we move from here with the consciousness of this promise. May we, may we look forward to the realization of this promise. Let nobody take this promise for granted. Amen. Father, help us. Amen. We want to be an example to others. Amen. We want to be a showcase and a showpiece to others. Amen. We want to show the world that what they think is impossible is possible with us. Amen. For we are covenant children of yours. Amen. I dedicate this house, therefore, in the name of the Father Amen. and of the Son. Amen. Of the Holy Ghost. Can you raise your hand and just thank the Lord? Our chairman will come and dismiss us. Please raise up your hand. Don't pick your back. Leave your back first. Just thank God. Only the grateful shall be fruitful. Raise your hand and adore the Lord and bless Him for all He has done, for all He will do, for all that He's doing now. Just keep thanking God, just keep celebrating God as our Father is going up. Please stand where you are, just keep celebrating God. Our women will have their prayer and fasting this Saturday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Every woman should be here, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. prayer and fasting. Lift up your hands and just wave to Jesus. Just say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for blessing my life. Thank you for blessing my life. Thank you for blessing my life. These blessings are sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ. We declare according to the word of God that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit shall rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Can you look for somebody and say, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever can we shout three big thunderers amen amen amen